today's sled is ready to go to put outside for Army Navy. to do is I'm going to tell you what the parts are of our sled so when I speak about them you'll know which I'm talking about. So I call this the face. This is the face of our sled, okay? These side rails here, they're runners and this piece up here we call the crossbar. So let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is get some tape. Masking tape, scotch tape, this is painter's tape because I love painter's tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off our runners so that when I do the face of our board, it doesn't get on there, okay? I'll have you know that I always do the darkest color first. Reason being then if some of the runner gets on there, it's really not noticeable and you can really fix it a lot easier. Um, if you don't have painter's tape, masking tape, scotch tape, another option, um, not as, not as guaranteed to work, but another option would be to take paper and try to fit it in there, you know, into that little tiny crevice. Not easy to do, but again, wanted to give you the option. So let's get started over here. I have my sponge, oh, sorry, forgot this part. That's typical of me, you guys know, uh, you know me. If your painter's tape rips, no problem. And pull it down a little bit just in case. And I really try to eye it up well. I'll pull this piece off. And this is inexpensive. You can actually get this probably at the dollar store or something there of, you know, that's comparable, okay? Oops. Pulled off too small a spot, but that's okay. That's the great thing about this. And I'll take a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Great. So I'm going to make this black stain because I'm doing the Go Army sled. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my sponge brush that everybody got with their with their sled. Now I'm going to try to bring it as close as I. Oh, I can't really. So you can't really see it here. Let me hold on. Let me use my mask to give you an idea. Okay, you see that? This is a well loved sponge brush. Okay, and you know I've said it before. If you take care of your tools, they'll take care of you. <laughs> So right now I'm gonna dip it in my stain and my stain spilled on the table. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm going in up and down strokes. You see how I'm doing that? Nice and even. Trying not to stop in the middle cause if you go like this and then like this, it kind of leaves a funny um, pattern and we don't want that. So again, I'm loading up my brush Nice long strokes. Okay. In this instance, I'm using the black on the face and I'll be using a nice wood tone just to give it a really soft, warm feeling on the, um, on the runners. Of course, you can always do stuff however you want. If you ever just wanna slay in some, some paint, call us. We'll be happy to hook you up. And again, you don't want it super thick. You see, I'm letting it run off the, you know, let the brush run out because 
two thin coats, you will hear me say it a zillion times, is always better than one thick coat. Now here's a little tiny knot. You might not be able to see it. It's a little knot there. So I'm just gonna pounce on that, just going up and down like this on it, just so that the paint gets into the crevice. Then I'm gonna go behind it and smooth it out because we don't wanna leave it like that. Okay. Nice, long, sweeping strokes. I'm hoping for Santa to bring me a, an overhead tripod for my camera because that would be so tinsel. Okay. Can you guys see? Just long, and it doesn't take forever. I'm sure if I was doing this with laying straight down and, and not chit chatting, uh, it would probably be done already. Okay. If you want some of the wood to show through, by all means, just do a single coat. If you want it to really show through, add a little bit more water to the stain. <clears throat> the weather has been so wonky around here. I think things are trying to bloom again. It's December 2nd and it's 52 degrees out there. Okay. Okay, so that's the front of our face. I'm also going to do our sides here. You want to get that done. So again, the best way to do this, here we go. I'm going to reach in. And you know, the edge of the wood, it, it, because it's rough, it actually makes it really hard for the paint to get absorbed. So on this part, I do pounce, okay? And if you want to put the tape on the inside, you can. It's so hard to see. So I'm really not worrying too much about that. And it's drying already, which is nice. So I'm gonna be able to get to my next step pretty quickly. Just wanted you to see this part. Swinging back, I'm going to do that part as well. Grabbing some of my paint, my stain, and just doing that pouncing again so that it does get into the crevices. more of those little knots pounce pounce to get into the knot okay am I happy oh yeah and like I said it's already drying so you see how it's not as glossy in some spots that's because that's dry so I'm just gonna check it again make sure Go down and around, get those inside corners, sorry, those inside seams. And we're gonna move along to the next step. The face of my board is now dry. So I'm going to take the um, tape And I'm just going to turn it around and lay it back down, this time on top of the face. And I'll listen in a second to show you. Uh, and the, oh, you know, let me, yeah. Let me just do it this way. Cause I want you, I don't want you to think that the black on the tape is actually the black on, uh, actually the face of the board, but you can do it either way. Okay. Now, if you should have a little bit of 
uh, over overage or you could just take a cloth and and wipe it away Add a little bit there or you can let it dry and then just pick it off with a nail um, or a razor what have you so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my brush while it was drying I washed it out people tell me all the time oh I can never get the black out of my brush it doesn't happen it does okay because if I put this in here now into the white into the water it's not turning black is it okay so just give it a second give it a try uh, let me just wipe this off because now I've made it wet and I don't want it wet for this particular portion get another one okay. so. and again I'm not going to do it on both sides I'm going to show you the one side as well as the crossbar and you're going to want to repeat it on the other side so, excuse me. I have dried out my brush, got all the water out of it. Another way you can tell if it has all the paint out, when you do it on a paper towel, it's clear, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the runners and the crossbar. So I'm going to dip my, um, my brush into the stain that I chose for this, which is a nice wood stain. And I'm going to show you a few little tricks. So I've got it on here. Again, those long strokes. Now you see how nice and sheer that is? I like it like that. And that's what I'm looking to go towards. Let me bring it up to you. I really want to see the wood. Okay. If you would want it darker, by all means, you can make it darker. <clears throat> but I want it sheer, more sheer. Now again, you don't want to stop and start stop and start your strokes because then you'll get these really strange little lines. I want to look more natural. So always nice long strokes. Grab a little bit more. You see how it's darker in one spot until I move it around. And again, those nice long strokes that just whip away will give you. Um, Kind of a seamless stain. Okay. Now, if let's say you have a different color stain and you don't want it as dark, okay, or I'm gonna make a mistake so I can show you how to fix a mistake, okay? Let's just say you got distracted and it got a dark spot there. And it's already starting to dry. Well, what we're gonna do is, here's a little rag that we gave you and I'm going to just move it along. And it kind of acts as a, just a way to move it in. Also, if you put it on really, really heavy and you want to take some off, use that rag for that. If when you were doing your face, you wanted it a little less you know, deep, by all means you can use it for that as well. So I've done this part. And again, I'm doing the top and the sides. By all means, do the back. I'm just for you know, time sensitive. I'm just going to do the tops and the sides and such. Again, those edges, you know how I told you the edges are kind of hard to absorb it. So we do pounce, pounce, pounce. And then the bottom. Again, this would be a place where I would use my rag just to dry it off, okay? So that's how that's gonna look. I'm gonna just, like I said, um, I'm going to actually look at it now while I'm doing it and just add a little bit more on there. Okay, done. I'm also going to do the bottoms, but not right now. Just drive it up a little bit so I can lay it down. Okay. So now I'm going to do across the top of my runners. Still, again, it, with anything you're doing, um, you always want to have nice, long strokes. I can't say it enough. I just can't. I'm sorry. But you see how this is a little bit lighter, you know, as we go across? The reason I did the black first was because if this got on the black, you, would, you wouldn't see it. Um, by doing the black first, if you got black on that, you had time to then remove it before you put this on, this layer on. So I'm moving around. Again, if you wanted to 
have a darker runner or a darker anything, let it sit and repeat the process. So again, I'm gonna go up here now. Uh, let me get this over here. And I'm going to meet the runner on this side. Again, pounce, pounce, pounce. And I think this is the one where you, you may wanna just, cause that's actually shown upwards. Do a little rubbing on that. Okay. So again, the runner on that side is completely done. After I do both runners, I'm gonna come back and do my crossbar. I do my crossbar the same color as my runners. Again, when you get these colors home, or whatever colors you've chosen, for based on the project you picked, those are the colors you're gonna get. Um, you don't have, you could do whatever you want. If you wanna change it up, say you wanted to do black and then wood here, it's yours. And you have enough to do all of that. Enough to change things around. I'm gonna finish this. And then we're gonna be good to go. And of course, I'm going to wash my brush the second I get finished with this. Okay, and again, top, bottom, sides. When you have the time, that's what you're going to do. I'm gonna finish this up and we'll be right back. So everything's dry and I'm ready to remove the tape. Okay, I'm all good to go. If there was any little spots, now would be the time to just go in and touch them up but I'm ready to roll and put down our stencil. Get to the garbage. Okay, so here's our stencil and we have weeded it for you and put the transfer on it for you. When we go back into having in-house classes, you'll be doing that job, okay? So what we're going to do is gonna kind of just eye up where we want it to land. If you are type A, and I get that, you are welcome to measure from here to here and here to here and make sure it's even and the sides, you know, pretty, pretty even themselves there, okay? So what we're going to do is this has been burnished. What does it mean to burnish something? It means to make sure the adhesion is there. What we're going to do now is we're going to take off the grid, not the transfer, the grid. I can't tell you how many times I've actually you know, put down the transfer, then taking it off. So just bend that back a little bit and pull it. You notice I'm doing it on a 45 degree angle. The reason for that is so that it doesn't lift, okay? Um, and you'll see sometimes if there's, especially here with the, with the Athena helmet, okay? If it lifts, it means it gets stuck on here. We just push it back down, burnish it again, and pull it up. So that 45 degree angle is kind of important, I think. These are just little helpful hints that we, we give you. And we'll full service here at West Point Arts and Crafts. Okay. Oh, done. So what I'm gonna do now, because this is the sticky side as you can tell, is I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to eye it up. If you wanna use the corners here as a, as a guide, you can do that. And I'm going to just Decide where I want it. Now you see, I can still move it a bit. Once you've committed, you kind of have to stay with it. Otherwise, it, it just, you have to stay with it. So just decide from there what you want it to, you know, where you want it to be. Okay. I'm watching edge to edge, side to side. I'm happy. And again, I'm doing this on an angle so you can see it. So here we go. I've committed. By committing, I'm gonna go from the center out. Okay, this way anything that's, you know, it's not gonna get any, as I call it, crunchy marks. You want the blue to lay down perfect. Now, we have to burnish it to the board. That would be done with a burnisher like this, right? You don't have one of these? My health insurance card, I'm gonna run with that right now. You can use that. Any store card that you may have got in the mail, whatever, and you only use a little key fob, you can use that. Or I'm giving you a tongue depressor or large craft stick, and you can do that, okay? 
And you wanna make sure that it's really down really well. You don't wanna scrape it where the blue is going to lift. But right now, I'm just making sure it's going down. And usually you can see that it's down by, it kind of changes colors. You kind of see it, it, it where it's really, really down. Now we're gonna go across the whole thing. Again, whichever you choose to use, as you see, I'm doing this whole thing with the tongue press because that is what I know you're gonna have because I'm gonna give it to you. Okay, pretty happy with that. We'll see how happy by when it comes up. Now, again, 45 degree angle, okay? If the blue starts to come up, you could just hold it down with the finger or the depressor and pull it away, okay? 45 degree angle. When there's these little islands, I call them, those like the O, the A, the R, a lot of stuff going on in the helmet, the star, you wanna be, you know, do it carefully, okay? If it was to come up, we would just push it back down. So I did burnish that quite well, so I don't know if we're gonna have any of that, uh, you know, coming up situation. So let me just see. I'm just holding it down and pulling on it. Again, that angle is so important because without it, that's when those insides would be coming up. I also have this raised, so it's not flat, which is another reason that uh, it's taking me a little bit of time. Let me get this out of the way. Messy workstation makes me crazy. Okay. And again, you're gonna be doing this flat. exhausting okay and sometimes I'll, I'll save this only because I may use it to let's say everything is really close instead of using say the um, masking tape the painter tape I may just rip this off and lay that down there you know so that I don't go off the side but again that's an option I don't really need that there I'll leave it there just to show you. I'll put another one down here. And then we really don't have to worry about it getting on the black. Of course, we always wanna be as careful as we can, but save your tape for the next project. Use your transfer paper, why not? Okay. Okay. And because I put that there, I'm just gonna burnish it a little bit. You don't want the paint to go underneath and it won't. Okay, so that's down. I'm going to do the same thing with my um, crossbar. You know what, let's do that now, why not, right? So it's been burnished down. I burnished this already. I'm gonna pop it off. I'm gonna pull it out again on that angle. I'm gonna eye it up and put it up here. I don't think you're in the line, let me just Make it so you can see that. I'm gonna eye it up and just feel. Now, see, I'm just gonna bend it so I know where the edges are, see? And that gives me an idea of where I want it to land. I like that. And I'm gonna measure it there. So I think that's, and another way to um, see if you're centered is to run your fingers along it and see if it, you know, buckles up, or, no, that looks pretty good if it's even. Oh, no, I'm a little, I'm listing a bit. Put down the edge. Yep, I'm happy. So if I'm happy, I'm gonna burnish it down. I figured why not, I'm here, I'm doing it. We can do it. Um, and then we'll pull it off like this. Okay. 
And now because this is so, so close to the edge, I'm definitely going to use this to keep it from, keep the paint from getting on the, the stain. Ooh, it's kind of wrapped up. So I'm gonna put that up there. Making sure it's above the letters. because You don't want to mask any portion of the letters. And again, you could just use the tape. I just like to recycle as much as I can and here I can, so to speak. Okay, so I'm gonna use that up there. And then I will actually just, excuse me one second, get the tape, because that's what's lifting that up, and do this on the bottom of it. burnished. I could just do that with my finger. In quilting we call this finger pressing. Where you just do that with your actual finger. Okay, I'm gonna put this back under here and we're gonna start painting. But first, I'll show you a little trick about when we paint. Okay, sometimes when you put the color in it bleeds underneath the, um, the stencil. Have a little trick on how to avoid that. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, the black one that I've used to do the background. Again, I washed it already and I'm going to dip it just ever so slightly. Just the tip of it is dipped in and I'm going to from the outside in. Okay, from the outside in. Because what I'm doing now is, and I'll try to bring it up closer. What I'm doing now is sealing the edges. Okay. With the paint, it's almost acting like a glue. Down here where there's lots of tiny things, I'm just gonna pounce to get that sealed go. Have to lay it down. And I'm going to do that with all the letters. The reason is because if something is going to bleed, it's going to be the first coat. And if this was the first coat and it bled, would you know? No, because it's going over something black. If this was a red sled, I'd be using the red. So whatever your face has been painted with, the whole thing, that's what you're going to use. You notice how I'm not going this way to push it underneath. We're coming from the outside in. Okay. And I'm going to do that with all the letters and I'll be right back. And then we're going to put our color on. All of the lettering is dry now. And you'll see that I only had to do around the edges. So like, the inside of the O and the A and the R, and of course the big part of the helmet. I didn't have to um, paint any of that because again, it's just a matter of getting our edges sealed. That's what our goal was. So we just move this back into the frame for you. I'm learning, getting a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other brush that we gave you, see the secondary brush, and I'm going to get my paint that's gonna go on my for my letters. And again, once again, showing you, see, old brush. So don't think it's disposable, really just wash it out and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna put in like that. I'm not dunking the whole thing in, that's not necessary. And again, the same way that I drew it in with the black, I'm just gonna draw it in again from the side over. Again, as I've said in the past, light coats. Two or three light coats is so much better than a dark coat. I 
And we're gonna do the whole thing like that. Just do another one. Again, drawing it in from the side. Super thin. And you're like, but wait, it's green now because the black is showing through. Eventually the black will not show through. And we'll be good to go. So these are big, um, you know, letters and things that we're trying to cover. But my, sure you're gonna have a question is, what happens when we get to the Athena helmet? So I'm gonna move this down just a little bit because again, we have the feathers at the top, we have the sword, we have the star. Again, very similar to what we did with the black initially. And we're just gonna kind of pounce it a little bit now when it pounces, you see it gets kind of like a texture, and then we're just gonna lay it down. Because, believe it or not, when you're brushing over a lot, sometimes you brush over so much you start taking the paint off. In this instant, that's fine. So what I do is, after I get that, let me show you a little closer. See how it looks all muddled? I'm gonna go back with the side of my brush and just flatten it. Then this is my first layer. So you see just by using the side of the brush, so much softer. So this is gonna be my first coat of I'm sure many. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'll do the Athena helmet for you. And then I will continue on while you guys are waiting to see the finished product. And just so you know, this is the process that we do with all of our stenciling. So everything you saw me do today, masking off the sides, you know, here I did with the white on the top and the bottom, uh, putting on your stain, then burnishing on your uh, stencil, every product. If you're doing a, a tiny little, you know, wood project, it's all done the exact same way. The technique doesn't change. I will tell you though, when you are doing this, sometimes if you have too much uh, black on it initially, you couldn't see where it was going. You wanna make sure you're catching all of the edges. For instance, see the top of the Athena helmet? You can't see that line because I didn't go over it. Therefore, I've missed it. So I'm going to just And now you can see it under the yellow. We know that I've done the whole piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going. I'll be back in a bit. I did another coat, and just an FYI, for this particular one, um, and any actually any of the ones that you're not gonna be doing in-house, I'm giving you a different yellow, okay? This yellow is a bit more opaque. It's not gonna take as many uh, layers. So this is just that first one I put on that I sided against. I did the whole thing just so it was even. And then I just did two layers of this paint. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's peel it off. Let's get rid of this. And again, 45 degree angle. Now it's not 100% dry, but it's dry enough to take it off. So if it's, that's the case, you wanna make sure it doesn't fall back on itself. FYI, this will rip. This is not meant to be used again, this particular type of stencil. So if it rips, no big deal. We're fine with that. I'm just gonna hold down this end here as I pull 45 there, pull 45 this way.
here, I'm just holding it down. So pulling this way and this way, still 45 degrees, there we go. can't see that right because it's the G up there. Just pulling it off. And I'm going to grab a toothpick. You can use a toothpick, a tweezer, anything sharp to get the insides of the uh, letters out. So I'm just gonna grab a toothpick. Grabbed a toothpick and I'm gonna show you how it works. I want you to see that really does work. Um, you can use a toothpick, you can use go right under there a safety pin a push pin see I guess it really works guys let me do another one with the toothpick so you know that it can happen okay there we go uh, now in the essence of time I'm going to use my tweezers so just to expedite it really basically anything sharp Sometimes if you can't see, just go into the center of it. This way you'll know where you're digging out. Now, after this part is done, I mean, it's not to do my crossbar, of course, but you can go back and touch things up. You can use a Q-tip if you don't have a small brush, or you can use your big brush and just use the edge, the tip of it. That's fine as well. And then I'm gonna come down here and do our Athena helmet. And I try to go from the outside, I look for that little bit of a ridge, which means that's where there's gonna be some vinyl to pull. And I do that. And again, this is why you do thin coats and not thick gloppy coats. Floppy is a technical term because you want to be able to see where the line is. So you see where the vinyl is. Or the, the, not vinyl, what are we doing today? Stencil. And I'm doing, because I don't want to gouge my, gouge the wood. And if you do, that's okay. Just grab a little paint, go right over it. Nobody will know. Okay. Now I see that this part right here, I didn't put enough paint on that. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna go back, push that down. Because remember there's always a way to fix things. Push that down, I'm going to actually just use my finger, which is why my hands look the way they do guys. Don't judge me, okay? And I'm just gonna put some paint on there. If I'd had a brush around, I would have used a brush. I didn't, I used my hands. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to go around and, and weed this in the interim. Now, if you wanna have like a muddled look, you can make it so that it's you know deeper in some spots and not in others. And it'll give you kind of a worn look. I kind of, I like that personally. It's a very rustic feel. Gotta get that in there. And again, my eyes aren't what they used to be, sorry. 
So I'm just gonna come around. I'll just pull off there. Remember, because I put the paint down, it didn't have to be dry to pull it off. And I'm trying to be mindful of the camera as well. So it may take a little bit longer than if I wasn't worrying about that. I have a star here. this a bit so I can get to it. And you know, if you get a little confused because of the amount of you know paint or what have you on something, um, if you have a picture of the Athena helmet and bring it up on your phone or what have you, um, it'll be easier for you to know where you should be poking around. going to lean it so that I can see with the glare. Yes, my glasses. I think I may need some new glasses. I always had perfect vision. And then I was over 40 and that was it. It was all over. Okay. One, I know there's one little stripe here to grab that out. This somewhere. Okay. I'm gonna have to turn this over, guys. I'm sorry. It's the only way I'm gonna get to it. There we go. I just had to do it where I could see which direction we were going in. Okay, so I've got the Go Army, as you can see, off and running. Now, there are some spots that I will go back with, uh, probably with my toothbrush, my, my toothbrush, my toothpick. Okay, so a little bit of paint there, um, because it lifted a wee bit. Again, that 45 degree angle is so important, because you don't want things to lift on you. But if they do, take, you have two ends. Take one end of your toothpick and just fill it in. Perfect. And again, because I was digging around, because I was not able to see. Again, I should. That was my fault. I needed a brighter light to see what I was doing. If it gets a little gloppy, finger down. Done. Check around here. Any more? Any more? Nope. I think I'm pretty good. So that up. Oh, you know where I couldn't find that last line. I'll, I'll do that. Done. Now, so we're, we're, we're in the home stretch. So the same way, let me just turn this around for you. The same way um, the first coat I put on here was black before I did the yellow, up here at the top, my first coat, which you can see I already did, you can see it on the, the flange here, was the wood color. Because you wanna do your, whatever is the background, okay? So you can see it a little bit better. So I already put a coat of the wood stain. And because the stain is an acrylic, putting it on there, it's going to seal it. Uh, it's gonna give us that same um, finish as if we just put regular paint down. So I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna grab my brush and get my black. And I'm gonna get a paper towel because I did wash out my brush, but I just didn't get it 
100% dry, and I want this to be very dry. I like to have my brushes super dry when I'm putting on the paint for the coloring because if it's too wet, it'll roll around. You don't want that. And you want some even, you want an even coating, okay? So I'm just gonna show you the same way I did that. I decided that I want the West Point up here to be done in black. So the stain that I used here will be my uh, letters here. Also, if you find you have a few little spots on here, uh, go back with your black or whatever color. Uh, I kind of like it if it looks a little pulled up because it gives it a little aged uh, look to it. But right now I'm gonna do this. So I have my black over here. And the same way I did that, I'm gonna go in with my brush, just with that tiny little bit, okay? Take off the excess, you don't need tons of it on there. And I'm gonna go over here. Now on the top here, if you wanted us to um, cut you, say a family name, or any 12 letters, we could put that across the top. So since, I mean, I don't know. I know a lady, her last name is Lee. We could have put the Lee family and that would still be under the 12. Or Pagans, Taylors, Kendricks, you know. Granted, if your last name has more than 12, we'll do our best. We're gonna get it on there for you. We just can't put the or family afterwards. But we're gonna do our best to make it look fabulous, okay? So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do it twice, the same way, I, well, I did that three times. But until I'm happy with the finished look. And again, because this has been watered down a bit because it was used as a stain, this may take a few more coats. This may take three coats or four coats, depending on the finished look that you want, okay? So as you see, that's done. As soon as it's dry, I'm gonna pull it off and we're gonna be finished. The last piece of our puzzle is ready to be revealed. So I'm going to pull off the, the painter's tape that we use to keep that nice and clean, a nice clean line. And I was just cleaning up while I was waiting for this to dry. Good practice, clean as you go. Okay, and this one at the, that was at the top. Again, you could have used painter's tape. But I like to recycle where I can. 45, even a little tiny something like this, still going to go at a 45 degree angle, okay? You see it breaks off. It's supposed to break off. So you pull in this direction and then pull in that direction and pull back again this direction. I don't know if you can see it that well. I'm so sorry. Our technology is not as advanced as I would like it to be. But I'm gonna pull that off there, see? Put that in there. Okay. I'll finish doing that. And again, in here in the circles, in the, the insides, I wonder if there's a name, for, I'm sure there's a name for that. The inside of 
an O or B or D or Q. Want trivia? I'll give you trivia. The dot on the top of an I, a lowercase I, or a lowercase J, do you know what that's called? No, don't go Google it. That is called a tittle. And that is what is used as that little dot. Upper and lowercase, another interesting fun fact. Why they're called uppercase and lowercase? Because I believe it was Ben Franklin, who made, you know, he had a print shop. He printed for Richard's Almanac. And the numbers that we now know as uppercase, those were in the uppercase. The other ones are in the lowercase. So again, I don't know if that's a myth or folklore. I think it's fun. Maybe you guys can find out, Google it, research it, and then get back and leave it on my comments. last bit and when I was um, painting over the letters that was up here on the crossbar um, there's little holes from where I, I nailed it where I had to put the nails in and sometimes that get caught that does get caught up in where your lettering is when that's the case I just took a toothpick with a little bit of paint on it and dabbed it in so I tell you, those toothpicks, they come in quite handy. I know sometimes we use, um, I think the first video I did, we used, what do we have laying around? Uh, safety pins. But you know, toothpicks are so much more accessible. You find them all the time, you know? Uh, right there. So it's done. Can you believe it? It is done. I hope you enjoyed today's project and come back for some more exciting, fun, creative things here at West Point Arts and Crafts. Be safe, be blessed, and art is everything.